Alrighty, I think we're ready for the party. Sam, you got some good pictures that I could get off of you from that cake? What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome back to my channel. Y'all know who I am. It's me, Mr. Coffee. Welcome back to Mr. Coffee's table. And today we are going to be making something very, very special. Today we are going to be making Ghana. Well, I'm not going to say Ghana. And listen here, my Togolese brothers and sisters, Cameroonian brothers and sisters, Senegalese, Togo, listen, Nigerian brothers and sisters, okay? This is just a general jollof rice. It's a mixture of all, of all the countries, okay? So don't come for me, okay? This is just, you know, a collage of all the African, the West African countries, Ghana. I mean, I keep saying Ghana. Jollof rice. <laughs> jollof rice. So I'm making jollof rice today. Plain and simple. And I know y'all want to see my face last time because last time my face wasn't in the camera. So here's my face. All right. So I'm going to bring y'all in closer so that y'all can see the lovely ingredients that I have here. So right here we got the tomato paste, but we're not going to be using all of it. We're going to use about four tablespoons of this tomato paste. We've got some oregano. We've got some dried smoked shrimp that I'm gonna be putting in a blender later. And then we've got curry powder right here. We've got some nutmeg. We got some Badia Complete. We got the bay leaves right here. I got three of them, but you don't have to use three. I'm using three because I like the flavor. Um, got two medium onions. We've got six medium tomatoes. This is a whole, um, this is a whole red bell pepper. I've got about an inch of ginger right here. I've got five cloves of garlic, so about two, two and a half tablespoons, as much as you want. I've got one um, scotch bonnet. This is kind of a large scotch bonnet, so just one. You can make it as spicy as you want to, but I don't like my super, super spicy, so I'm just gonna use one, all right? And right here, we've got the, the rice. Now, some people use parboil. I know that my Niger folk use the parboil rice. Um, you know, some people like to use basmati, some people like to use jasmine rice. But I'm, today I'm just using some long grain rice that I just had in the kitchen so that I can get rid of it. And I got my beef broth. So I made this beef broth from scratch. You don't have to make yours from scratch. You don't even have to use beef broth. You can use chicken broth, you can use vegetable broth, whatever broth you want. Some people use water. I would never use water in my jollof rice. If that's you, then you do that, okay? But over here, but over here, we like to use flavor. So I'm using beef broth and I'm using about, this is about three to four cups, but we may not use it all depending on how much stew we have, all right? Let's get into it. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna take the onions that I sliced and I'm gonna put it in this oil that I got right here. And this oil, this oil is a mixture. It's a quarter cup of canola oil and then a quarter cup of palm oil. And then this is a, the brand of palm oil that I'm using. Nina or Nina, 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 Nina. Whatever brand you want, you just make sure it's a good tasting palm oil, or you can use Zomi as well. And you want to stir this until it gets a little brown on the edges. 
All right, guys, this is about where you want it to be. It's starting to get brown on the edges. And at this time, you gotta make sure you watch it so it doesn't burn. Burn, burn, burn. So now that that's good and good and caramelized and starting to get brown, getting brown on the edges, we're gonna take one, two heaping tablespoons. So I would actually say that's about a little bit more. I would say that's about a quarter of a cup of tomato paste and you want to get that nice and cooked and you want this to cook in the oil first before you add your blended mixture so that you can get rid of some of that um that raw tart tomato taste yeah that raw acidic tomato taste tart sour whatever you want to call it like a lot of people would put um they will use baking soda to get rid of that, or they will use some kale or kale, I believe is what it's called. And it comes in the form of rock, which is pretty much bicarbonate of soda. You would do that just to get away from some of that, um, from some of that tart raw tomato taste. But I'm gonna just set it cook for about three to four minutes. You really don't need to do the um the baking soda but you know just be patient and let it cook for about two to three minutes okay as you can see the tomato paste has taken to the oil and it has completely taken to so see when i pick it up it just falls off it falls apart all right it's completely taken to the oil now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our blended mixture I remember the blended mixture is the, the pepper, the tomato, onion, ginger, garlic. And I also added the um, smoked dry shrimp in here as well. And be careful you don't burn yourself. All right, we're gonna stir that and we're gonna let that go for about five minutes, but I'm gonna cover this up and let it go for five minutes before I add my spices into it. All right, so we're back. So this is about where you want it to be. You see the oil is starting to separate on the top. I don't like to use too much oil in mine because once you put this, I'm gonna cook mine in the oven. Once you cook this in the oven, you don't want a super, super oily um rice jollof rice so now i'm gonna take my spices and i told y'all we got the curry powder the nutmeg the badia complete salt bay leaves and oregano now my beef broth i made from scratch okay so i know how much salt i put in mine you put as much salt as you want in yours but make sure you taste the stew Taste the stew before you add your salt. Taste your stew before you add the salt. Taste the soup, <laughs> the stew, before you add your salt. All right? And I know how much salt I put in my beef broth, so I know how much I need to add and how much I need to add, and I know the salt content of it. So now we got our spices in there. We're gonna let that go for about two minutes so that can get all married together, all right? All right, y'all, y'all see the oil is starting to settle on, settle on top. It's been about five minutes. Now what I'm gonna do, it's nice and thick. I'm gonna take my rice, and this is four cups of long grain rice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stir that on in there. And I'm actually gonna cook this on the stove before I add my my beef broth, or whenever you feel like adding your um 
your beef broth, your vegetable broth, your chicken broth or chicken stock. Cook it on the stove to cook more of this moisture out so that it's almost dry. All right, y'all, see how dry it has gotten? It's not loose anymore. That means the rice has taken in as much of the stew as I want it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my broth in. I think I'm gonna, so there's four cups of rice. So I think I'm gonna add about three cups of this, three of this four cups. So this is a quart container, so I'm gonna add three cups of the broth into this like so and then you can freeze the rest of your broth and use it for another day that you're going to make jollof and you want to make sure it's stirred really 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 well i think i'm going to add a little bit more to it. All right. It's good and ready to go. What I'm gonna do I'm gonna take my foil and I'm gonna cover this up. as tight as possible. Now I'm gonna put this in a 400 degree oven for about 35 to 45 minutes, all right? And you can take it out every 15 minutes to turn it and stir it. But I like to leave mine in for at least 30 so I can, well actually I'll put it in for about 20 minutes, take it, stir it. Then I let it sit for the last 20 to 25 minutes so it gets that the bottom on it, the, the konzul, right? Because you want I like the, the konzul. It's not burnt, it's just you know, it's got a bunch of flavor and it's like kind of crispy on the bottom. It's like a snack, all right? So this is gonna go in the oven about 35, 45 minutes, and we will be bought. There with the fried plantains, and then he was my plate. Y'all know I have to be super extra with the shito, of course. Get you some. All right, y'all. Again, here's the plate with the fried plantain and the boiled egg and the. Tall, of course. And then you can also have this with you can. So normally people they will they will cook their chicken and the the broth that comes off that chicken they use for the rice. But since I'm trying to stay away from meat, um, I just opted out to use the beef broth and just freeze the beef that I stewed for it and just use it for something later on when I'm trying to be you know get in a cheat meal. So I just opted out for the egg and the fried plantain. Guys, thank you for joining me. Thank you so much. Comment below. What else would you serve with your jollof? How do you make it in your country? What countries are you from? And please like, share, and subscribe. All right? And thumbs up the video, of course. And if there's any other foods that you want me to make, please inbox me, email me at samuelcoffee at AOL.com. Mr. Coffee on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. <laughs> of course.
Sports. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for joining. Have a nice day. Until next time.